Bike maintenance doesn't have to be complicated or expensive. There are loads of basic maintenance tasks you can do with minimal outlay and minimal tools. Some of these can be done for less than the price of a coffee and cake. For our basic maintenance tasks, we're only going to need some basic tools. I know, sure, I've got pretty much every single tool you could think of available here, but I'm only going to be using some Allen or hex keys, some Torx keys, and then some screwdrivers. The sort of tools that you probably have lying around at home, and if you haven't, they are fairly cheap to invest and buy new, and best of all, they're going to last you a very long time, making them good value for money. First job we're going to look at is adjusting your headset. This could have developed a little bit of play in it over time, or you could have just decided to change your stem, for example, and need to put it all back together. To check to see if you've got any play in your headset, you can quite simply pull the front brake, rock the bike back and forth, and you'll be able to feel any rocking movement round by the headset. As it happens, this does have a slightly loose headset. So the first things we're going to need to do are to take our 5mm Allen key. So we need a 5mm on the stem bolts here. Some bikes might be a 4mm, but the first job is to loosen these two stem bolts off. So undo that one, the turns, then the same on this side. Undoing the stem bolts are going to be the first thing you're going to do and then doing them back up is the last stage of the job. Once you've got these loose, you can just take your 5 round key and take the headset top cap bolt. Normally, this is done as loose as it can possibly be done to remove any excess in the bearings. So I can already feel here this is nice and loose and it's causing that headset to rock and have some excess play. So what you would do is apply a little bit of preload onto the bearings using this. Just incre incrementally do it up until you can rock the bike and check that that free play is gone. There's no need to do it up particularly tight and there is no torque setting for that top cap bolt. So once you've got that, to remove the excess play, check your handlebars nice and straight and then go back and do your stem bolts up again. Depending on what stem and what bike you've got, some of them will have a specific torque setting on them, usually between five to six newton meters. And if it hasn't got that, then you just need to do them up tight enough to ensure that the handlebars don't move and everything's nice and secure. Once you've got it all tightened up, final check. Yeah, make sure you've got no free play. Job done. While some people are fortunate enough to have electronic shifting on their bikes, mechanical or cable operated gears are still incredibly popular. And if you have a sort of mid to low end bike, most of these cables run externally in the frame. And the best way to keep them running smooth is quite simply to lubricate them every now and again. And if you have externally routed cables, you don't even need any tools to do so. And to do that, the first thing we're gonna to need to do is shift our bike into the smallest sprocket on the cassette. This will in turn allow us to pedal the bike and manually push the rear derailleur up into the larger sprocket. By doing that, we will create some slack cable here, which enables us to unhook the outer cable or the guide, the housing from the frame guides, and then move it to lubricate our cable. From here, we can quite simply get a cloth, wipe our inner cable to remove some of the dirt, make it nice and clean, and then you can just take your favorite chain loop, so you don't even need to buy any additional grease or oil, apply one or two drops onto the outer cable, and then guide the cable over the top, and that'll help put the lubricant in from the inner cable onto the housing. You can do this process for the housing at the back by your rear derailleur, the piece up by the front near your handlebars. And then once that's clean and you've got the lubrication on there, move it around and pop it back into the derailleur and onto the guide on the frame. And then it's quite simply a case of reversing the process that you did to get to this stage. So a little bit of tension onto the rear derailleur, pedal, and then gradually let the derailleur drop down back to its smallest sprocket. And you've got some lubricated cables to help keep everything running silky smooth.
Something that I quite often see people struggling with is removing the rear wheel from your bike. Now I know this isn't specifically a maintenance task, but it is particularly helpful if you want to do some other maintenance tasks on your bike or just remove the wheel to make cleaning your bike that little bit easier. I mean, even Ollie struggles removing the wheel from his bike and he makes a right meal out of it. So many bikes will use a through axle or a quick release system. However, slightly cheaper or older bikes like this will use a solid axle. Now I know at the start of this video I said you're only really going to need Allen keys, some Torx keys or some screwdrivers but come on surely everyone has a spanner set in their garage or their shed at home and if you haven't well you can just buy one 15mm spanner and it's going to be only a couple of pounds and if you haven't got that Presumably most people have an adjustable spanner, meaning that you can adjust it to fit the size of the nuts on the solid axle. So to remove the rear wheel from this bike, you're gonna to need to undo both of the nuts either side. This is a little bit easier because I've got the bike in the stand, but it isn't crucial to be able to remove the rear wheel. And when we loosen off those nuts, one of the best, most important parts that we need to get right is pivoting the rear derailleur out of the way like this. So what we wanna achieve is lever it backwards. That will then create this extra nice bit of space here to allow the rear wheel to drop out and not be fighting and wrestling with the chain as you're trying to remove the wheel. So first job is just to loosen off the nuts, one on each side, loosen that one off a bit. So once these are loose, you do need to support and hold the wheel in place. You don't have to take the nuts all the way off. You can just loosen them off to give a little bit of clearance. Then, like I said, pivot that rear derailleur backwards, slide the bike, and the wheel out nice and steadily. Refitting the wheel is quite simply a case of reversing the process that you use to remove it. So pivot that rear derailleur out of the way, rear wheel up onto the chain, get the sprockets lined up. Once you've got the wheel up into place, lift it to try and hold it centrally in the dropouts. You can just use your fingers to tighten up the nuts on the end of the axle and you need to lift the wheel up to make sure you've got it central in the dropouts on the frame. If you're unsure about this, once you've got the wheel nuts done up by hand, you can always just remove the bike from the stand, rest it onto the floor and that will ensure that you've got the wheel sat in nice and square within the frame. Then you can just take your 15 millimeter spanner do the nuts up nice and tightly and check that your wheel is secure and that it spins freely and the brake isn't rubbing. Simple. Super easy one here. So instead of throwing away your old clothes, your old t-shirts or kitchen cloths, keep them and you can use them as rags to wipe your chain over. So if your bike isn't dirty enough to need a full wash and degrease at the end of your ride, you can just take 30 seconds to get your cloth and then wipe some of the old grease and grime off of your chain. You can either hold the cloth on the bottom and turn the back wheel around like this to wipe as much of it off as possible, or you could hold the cloth there and back pedal your bike. So by doing this, you're gonna wipe off some of the old grease, the grime, the grit that's built up over your ride. And then if you need to, you can lubricate your chain ready to go for your next ride. This is gonna make your chain last a little bit longer because it's gonna get some of that grit and grime that would be wearing away at your chain otherwise. Oh, just make your bike last a bit longer and a clean looking chain oh, it looks cool doesn't it finally the easiest arguably the best and 100 free advice i can give is consider subscribing to gcn tech hit the bell icon so that you're up to date when we release new videos including more maintenance videos so you can learn how to fix your bike and save you more money for upgrades or just to spend on coffee and cake Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please do give it a big thumbs up. And if you've got any bargain maintenance tips of your own, let us know in the comments section down below. And why not let us know if you've got any other maintenance videos you'd like to see. I'll keep an eye out, try and pick some good ones. See you later.